Cataractcoach.com. Post your polar with a split capsule. How do you complete this case with a pre-existing capsule split? This is a tough one. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Sophia Jane from Mumbai, and she has a nice FACO channel called FACO Point on YouTube. Check it out. Now, starting with the incisions, there you can see there's the posterior polar opacity, and the capsule is definitely split down the middle. So a little bit of tripan blue dye here with an air bubble to get some anterior capsule staining. Put viscoelastic in, and remember, you need a nice capsule X here because you're probably going to end up doing a three-piece lens, right, with optic capture. So let's get a five-millimeter axis. There's that posterior polar opacity, and you can see how the capsule is split wide open. That's the elliptical shape there. So starting off with the rexus using a cystotome, again, make sure you get a really nice five millimeter rexus because you're going to need to be placing a lens with haptics and sulcus and optic captured behind the rexus. Beautiful looking rexus there. Now, you know from posterior polar cataracts, what do you want to avoid? Avoid hydrodissection here. So you can do a hydrodelineation and get that endonucleus separated, but no hydrodissection. Beautiful result there. We've sped the video up a little bit just to be efficient here. More viscoelastic. And now, using the FACO probe and a chopper to just get that endonucleus out of the bag. You don't need much FACO power. It's pretty soft here. Not a lot of nuclear sclerosis. Just really titrating that vacuum with the FACO foot pedal to get that endonucleus up and out of the eye. There's the endonucleus. Now, you can also try to get as much of the epinucleus as you can. Remember, there's been no hydrodissection done. So now just nice and easy, get as much of it as you can, and that looks like a pretty good effort. You can also loosen up some of the subincision um, epinuclear shell here in cortex. You can even do a viscodissection, which is the way I preach it. So now here, going in more viscoelastic, don't let the eye collapse, that's a very smart move. Now going in with our hook or chopper, just to dissect away the subincisional epinucleus from the capsule. Oh, beautiful, very nicely done, brought that forwards. And now aspirate as much as you can using the FACO probe. Again, very minimal, if any, energy. You probably don't need any FACO energy. Just the vacuum. Get that piece up. And when you get this epinuclear shell up, you'll also get up a lot of the cortex here, more viscoelastic. And so now you could probably switch to a bimanual IA and clean up all the rest of this. So there you can see the remaining little bit of epinuclear shell, some cortex. And here we go. Remember, the capsule's open there posteriorly, so viscodissection, I like the technique here. Make sure it's a good dispersive agent. You want to peel off that cortex and epinucleus off of the capsule. Here with a bimanual IA approach, which is very helpful here to get full access. And this entire time, remember, you want to keep the AC pressurized. You don't want to let the AC collapse or the AC pressure go to zero because that may allow vitreous to prolapse forwards here. You want to keep that anterior hyaloid face intact if you can. So more viscoelastic, always a smart move. And now probably switching hands. Yep, aspirator in the right hand now, infusion in the left, and getting all the rest of this lens material out, taking your time, and that'll come out very easily. And again, it's all about keeping the AC formed and not letting the vitreous prolapse. And so here, more viscoelastic, there you go. And now with that beautiful anterior capsular axis, you can certainly get a nice lens inside the eye. So there's that capsule rexus, you can see. And the posterior capsule definitely split wide open. There's been no displacement of any nuclear pieces or even cortical pieces. Here comes a three-piece lens. The first tap is going to go in the sulcus here. And then optic's going to come out. And then I'm placing the trailing haptic in as well. So beautifully done here. Nice control. We'll get those haptics and the sulcus, get that optic captured behind the rexus. That'll give absolutely great long-term stability. It also acts as a barrier. By having that optic capture, it's going to prevent any prolapse of vitreous. You create a nice, good uh, barrier effect there. Beautifully done. That's a really nice case. So, tough case. There can be cases like this with posterior polar. As you know, the posterior polar opacity means, by definition, the posterior capsule at that point is, is weak, Fragile, or sometimes, like in this case, frankly absent. And the patients can have, although it's rare, like this case, they can have a pre-existing split posterior capsule, which you're going to have to deal with at the time of cataract surgery. And so beautifully done here. Again, check out Dr. Jane's channel on YouTube called FACO Point. I'll leave a, a link down below. And remember, 
CataractCoach.com is a full-on website, too. We have a 25-part curriculum series. They have a whole series just about post-year polar, plus the free PDF book. You need to download that. And check out our podcast every week and follow me on social media. Thanks for watching.